everyone. I'm trying something new, so you gotta bear with me. I got Facebook Live, I got Instagram Live, I got Junior, I got the Critter Cam, so now when we upload, we can actually, when I put it on YouTube now, you'll actually be able to go and see what Critter Cam is seeing as well. So it should be pretty neat. So this is Junior, he is a prehensile tail skink, and he is from the Solomon Islands. He's also known as a monkey tail skink, but he's called a monkey tail skink because he has this really cool prehensile tail. I'll let me move this one, this will be easier to move. You see that really cool tail? And he uses that to wrap around branches and to provide him a little bit more stability. Let's see, what's really cool about this is they live in family groups called a circulus. It usually entails a male, a female, and their offspring, their babies. And with this species, it's really neat because the moms will actually grow her baby on the inside and she uses a placenta to nourish the baby rather than like a yolk. Really interesting creatures. At the end, I can take some questions. So yesterday we went all the way up to chapter three. Do you guys wanna get a little closer to Junior so you can watch him? Let's see, hold on one second. I'm gonna move you up too. I got a whole contraption going. So I got like books and I got stands and I got tripods. Hi everyone. Great whites, the fiercest hunters. Great white sharks are not the biggest or the fastest sharks in the world, but they are the most well known. This is because of how they have been shown in movies and stories, but it's also because of great whites, but it's also because great whites are among the few types of sharks that cause the most bites on people. I don't know if I believe that one, but we'll go with it. All sharks eat to live, and great whites are no are expert hunters. Their vision and sense of smell are better than most sharks. They are fast, intelligent, and super strong. The great white shark has several features that help it survive. First, its body is shaped like a torpedo, which allows it to move through the water very quickly. Its body temperature can vary so it can swim in warmer and cooler waters. The great white isn't really white, its skin is gray on top and white underneath. Seen from above, it blends in with the ocean floor. Seen from below, and it blends in with the sunlight, sunlit surface of the ocean. <laughs> Junior, look at that great white. We have great whites in Southern California. Skin in the game. Sharks have bumps all over their bodies. They are called denticles. The denticles are covered with enamel, the same hard coating found on the shark, on sharks and human teeth. Look at that. I have to admit, I can handle a lot of animals, but I'm still a little unsure about a shark. The coloring is called countershading. It helps the shark sneak up on prey. White, great whites have several rows of teeth and each tooth is about two inches long. Those teeth have jagged edges like a shot saw. He is also looking at Junior. He is macking away. As long as he's quiet, I'm good. They are good at catching and cutting and ripping flesh. A great white stomach digests food efficiently so it can get the energy it needs to swim for long distances. It can attack with speed and strength. The great white has excellent vision. Its eyes are five times bigger than human eyes. The eyes have a layer of crystals that magnify and focus everything the shark sees. Look how big that tooth is. Whoa. Can I have a kiss? Thanks. He's so sweet when he wants to be. And then there's the other times. Magnifying makes things appear larger. Focusing makes them appear clearer. Great whites move their pupils and other eye parts around to protect them when they attack prey. The great white shark has a great sense of smell too. Its olfactory bulb, the place where the nerves for smelling begin, is larger than it is in any other shark. Whoa. This shark can smell just one drop of blood and 10 billion drops of water. The great white size, speed, powerful jaws, and excellent senses make it a top predator. 
In the ocean, sharks are top predators and great whites are the top predators of the shark world. Here comes Mary Lee. When Mary Lee is coming, everyone knows to head for the shore. Mary Lee is a great white who was tagged with a radio transmitter while she was in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Scientists wanted to find out where Mary Lee goes every winter. It turns out she goes south to Florida. Sometimes the group gets a radio signal that tells them Mary Lee is swimming by a beach used by people. They notify officials near that beach to get everyone out of the water. You can one way a great white hunts is by swimming up under its prey and grabbing it. When it does this, it leaps from the ocean, splits the water, and thrusts its body into the air. This is called breaching and is mostly seen in great white sharks off the coast of South Africa. In that region, the ocean is shallow, so great whites can cruise along the bottom, thrust upward when they see or sense prey, usually seals or sea lions. So how do sharks make this dramatic leap First, they pick up speed as they move up to about 100 feet deep. By the time they are under a seal, they are moving around 20 miles per hour. The shark hits the seal from the same force as a car crash. Scientists believe the seal is stunned or possibly dead from the force of the blow before it is eaten by the great white. Seal Island off the coast of Cape Town, South Africa is home to large colonies of Cape fur seals. Great whites have a special technique for catching them. The sharks swim in a circle around the island. When a seal swims off the island to find food in the open water, a shark will swoop under it, breach, and catch it. Sometimes the seal gets away, though. Could I have another kiss? Junior? Could I have another kiss? He's like, nope. You only get one a night, Mom. That's it. Feeding frenzy. A feeding frenzy can occur when a shark sees that another shark has found something good to eat and joins in. As more and more sharks join the group, it turns from a feast into a fight. Some feeding frenzies involve hundreds of sharks fighting over the same food. Food gives sharks the energy they need to swim around all day and all night. It's hard to find food in the big ocean, but sharks are successful. They are experts at choosing the right food, finding it, catching it, and eating it. Their teeth, jaws, their teeth, jaws, ways of hunting, and digestive systems help them survive. What's on the menu? Sharks eat a variety of foods, but all sharks are carnivores. They eat meat. Some people shark, think sharks will eat anything, but sharks are actually pretty picky eaters. Some live where there is plenty of food, others roam the oceans hunting for the food that's best for them. Usually bigger sharks look for bigger prey, but the largest shark in the ocean eats some of the smallest creatures in the ocean. Whale sharks eat zooplankton, which include tiny fish, jellyfish, and fish eggs. How does such a big animal eat such tiny things? A hungry whale shark can open its mouth wide and gulp large mouthfuls of water. The water is full of zooplankton. Tiny teeth called gill rakers help the whale shark filter food from the sea water. Can we just back you up just a wee bit? Are you getting full? You're getting full. His belly is really fat. <laughs> As is it has a built-in filter system to separate the food from the water. The water passes through the filter and returns to the ocean. Oh, if you guys are going to be going on um, the YouTube to watch this, Junior is licking the camera. Awesome critter cam footage. Many small sharks, such as the blue shark, feast on squid, octopus, and cuttlefish. Some sharks, like the bullhead shark, have special teeth that can crunch through hard shells. They eat animals like lobsters, crabs, and clams. Bigger sharks, such as makos, eat bigger fish, such as bluefish and tuna. <laughs> they also eat smaller sharks. Big sharks, such as great whites, eat seals, sea lions, seabirds, and turtles. They have sharp, pointy teeth with jagged edges, designed to tear their food into bite-sized pieces. Sharks have teeth designed for food they eat. They can have anywhere from two to as many as 50 rows of teeth. Wow. Let's see where we're at. Depending on the species of shark. 
The teeth don't have roots, so they fall out easily, but sharks have a unique tooth replacement system. When a tooth falls out, another one moves up in its place from the row behind. This can happen in as little as a day or two. Look at all the sharks. Teeth waiting. I feel like you guys aren't seeing enough. Boop, 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 boop. There you go. Also, a shark's stomach can expand to get bigger. This means a shark can eat bigger meals that give them energy for longer. This way, the shark is ready, has a ready food supply to give them energy before its next hunt. Everyone. Ah! <laughs> they eat my plants and it's not good. Go back inside your home. Go back inside your home. so nice one so I have to be careful with him okay <laughs> it's a madhouse don't even think about it junior okay next chapter ocean oddballs some sharks have unusual bodies with frills horns and super long whiskers one shark has a big spike on its head there are sharks that look like snakes. Others look like old fashioned rugs. Many sharks have patterns on their skin, stripes, dots, and other markings. These help them hide. And some sharks can light up like a flashlight. Look at that saw shark. Whoa. That's pretty crazy, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know it's live. When all the animals wanna to try to get out. Bamboo sharks. Hi, Junior. Are you going to be sweet? Thanks. Bamboo sharks have slender bodies. Most are less than three feet long. Their thick tails are often as long as their bodies. Bamboo sharks are not aggressive. Neither are leopard sharks that we have in San Diego, right? Their patterned skin helps them blend in, making it hard for prey to see them coming. Predators that hunt bamboo sharks can't easily spot them. Wubigongs live on sandy ledges or the floor of the ocean. They have shaggy or lacy whis whisker-like growths called barbels. These barbels are very sensitive. Wubigongs use them to feel their way along the ocean floor. How cool. Can you see him? He blends in really well. What are you doing? Do you wanna jump on my shoulder? What are you looking for? Nope. Frilled sharks have long, narrow bodies. Their mouths are big and are filled with sharp teeth. They are named for the frills over their gills and the size of their heads. Bullhead and horn sharks are slow and tend to stay in one place. This could make them look like easy prey for others, but when a predator chomps down, it finds a painful surprise. These sharks have sharp horns and venomous spines. The predator may stop biting long enough for the shark to get away. Most lantern sharks carry their own light source. That's pretty cool. Bioluminescence is really neat. Like glowworms and fireflies, they have organs called photophores. What are you doing? Silly. They glow when needed. Lantern sharks live in deep water. <laughs> live in deep waters, having their own light is helpful when they need to see. Ouch, he just got me. Do you feel like I'm not paying attention to him? <laughs> Hold on, he wants to be. Hmm. It's not nice to bite mom just because you want attention. We're just gonna scoot this over. And that way you guys can see him. 
Because he's the star of the show, right? Having their own light is helpful when you need to see, pray, or attract a mate. The ability to make their own light is called bioluminescence, a long word that means living light. <laughs> the goblin shark, that sounds like a cool name, has been called the ugliest living shark. It has a long pointed snout which it uses to dig for shellfish on the ocean floor. Its mouth is filled with needle, needle sharp teeth that it uses to spear and then tear its prey. When it attacks prey, it pushes its whole jaw out of its mouth. When it's finished eating, it pulls the jaw back in. Ooh, that's kind of gross sounding, huh? Basking sharks are enormous. They can be up to 30 feet long and weigh over 40,000 pounds. They have a huge mouth, which stays open most of the time. As they slowly swim, small fish and zooplankton enter their open mouths. The basking shark's tiny teeth separate the water from the fish. They spit out the water and keep the fish. Look how big that mouth is. He could probably swallow you by accident. His belly is so full. <laughs> Many of the oddest sharks in the world live more than a mile under the surface. This is the deepest part of the ocean. Scientists look for new ways to explore these deep waters. They develop better submersibles, underwater vehicles used to dive into the deepest part of the ocean, and they find new ways to analyze the information they gather. These things have helped scientists discover new sharks. Whoa. Let's see. We'll do one more chapter. How about that? And then I think Junior's going to be done. Okay, smart sharks. We're going to do smart sharks and then why sharks matter. And then we'll be done. Okay. Hammerheads are weird looking creatures. They have long, narrow, hammer shaped heads with eyes on either side. When they swim through the ocean, hammerheads move their heads from side to side. Some scientists think it's motion, this motion helps them see better. Or it may help them keep their balance or pick up electrical signals from other creatures. Whoa. Hammerheads are called smart sharks because they use their heads to be better hunters. Their eyes are spaced far apart. This helps them see in front of them and also far to the sides. They can see all the creatures swimming around them, and they have good depth perception. They can see how near or far away things are. Depth perception is, so if you see it something, you're like, oh, that's about a foot or two away, right? There are nine different species or types of hammerheads. They swim in warm waters all over the world. Scallop hammerheads are the most common species. There are nine species of hammerhead in the hammerhead group. Each species has a slightly different head shape with different creases and bumps. The names of these species describe these features. You see we have, they have scalloped, smooth, and bonnet head. See, scalloped, smooth, and bonnet head. I never knew that. Okay, here's a quiz question. A group of hammerhead sharks is called a, a school, a shoal, or a shiver. That's pretty cool. Don't eat my plant. You have plenty of food. He has to come back near mom. Female scallop hammerheads grow about eight feet long. Males are smaller, usually around six feet. It's about the, the length of your, your dad. Each school of hammerheads forms a community. The largest sharks swim near the center of the pack and the younger ones swim on the outside. No one is sure why hammerheads form groups. Many other sharks don't. It may protect them from larger predators swimming together in large groups. It may help them migrate safely to cooler waters in the summer 
or it may help males find mates. Scalloped hammerheads are social and hang around in groups called schools. Hundreds of them swim together. Great hammerheads are the biggest members of the hammerhead group. They are also one of the 10 biggest sharks in the world. They are good hunters, but they rarely attack people. Divers have reported that great hammerheads <laughs> sometimes seem curious and swim around them. When the divers try to approach, the big sharks run away. Why sharks matter? This is probably gonna be the most important chapter. Sharks are important. They help keep our oceans healthy and in balance. The number of sharks in the ocean has gone down recently. Over 100 million sharks a year are killed. That's a lot. Many shark species are threatened with extinction. If this happens, they will disappear forever. A healthy ocean provides oxygen, food, water, and good weather. If sharks disappear, the ocean cannot remain healthy. It's true. They eat all the stuff that's sick and dying. Our apex predators are really important. An ecosystem is a community of creatures that live in a particular environment. Some creatures eat other creatures, some help others. Some take from the environment, others add to it. All of these things happen in a healthy environment. You see a healthy reef and then a dying reef. This is because of temperatures rising, pollution, lots of things. The oceans of the world are ecosystems that play a major role on life on Earth. Winds that move over the ocean pick up moisture and heat and blow it over the land. This is where much of our weather comes from, including rain. When the oceans are healthy, they provide fresh water for drinking and food for us to eat. For the ocean ecosystem to remain healthy and to provide all benefits, the creatures in it must remain in balance. Sharks are an important part of the ecosystem. They are top predators. This means they eat smaller fish, but aren't usually prey themselves. You see the water cycle? It rains, then it evaporates, and then it turns into precipitation again. You're killing me, Smalls. No sharks are with too few sharks. There would be too many smaller fish. There would not be enough food for all, the, for all of them, and then they would start to die off. Reefs are a good example of how sharks can keep their ecosystem in balance. Reefs form around piles of sand, rocks, or growth. Coral growth. They are home to many kinds of ocean life. All kinds of creatures, including sharks, interact on the reef. Small fish eat smaller creatures, such as tiny zooplankton and algae. Big fish eat smaller fish. Sharks eat many of the bigger fish. If there were no sharks, the bigger fish would eat all the smaller fish. That makes sense, right? And then the algae would grow out of control and damage the reef. So all animals in a uh, food web are very important, especially the ones at the top, the apex predators. Rather than being afraid of sharks, people should be afraid for sharks because their existence is threatened. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization estimates that the populations of almost half of all shark species have seriously shrunk. And one in every five shark species is in danger of disappearing. Scientists think more than 70 million sharks are killed by humans every year. It's even more than that. This book is a little old. Changes in our climate and pollution have all contributed to that threat. The end. Thank you guys for staying with me. Does anybody have any questions about sharks or questions about Junior that's running away? <laughs> oh, buddy, you got a fat belly on you. I'll let you guys get a little bit of a close up to him. So, this is Junior. You want to give him a kiss? He wrapped his tail. You want to give him a kiss, Junior? And you see his long tail, how it wraps around my arm? Ooh, Pacific horn skinks. Oh, sharks. Oh, I do too. I haven't seen one yet, though. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> 
Junior is pretty wonderful. Look how fat he is. So most lizards and reptiles in general will either lay eggs or they incubate the eggs inside of them. But with this species, the mom doesn't, um, instead will have the baby inside of her and she nourishes it just like humans nourish their babies inside. And then the mom will give birth in about eight months. He is pretty awesome. And then the mom and dad will both take care of it, which is also really rare in lizards. You see they have smooth scales, really excellent climbers. He has super, super strong nails. And then he has an extra prehensile tail that really can hold on tight. They are um, fullivores, I think it's called, where they mainly eat leaves. <laughs> they don't nest. Um, so they give live birth, um, but they'll stay in trees. They're strictly arboreal. They are the largest of the skink species. I'm gonna turn around here, hopefully you can see them. They are the largest of the skink species. But it's also kind of cool with them because even though they're so big, they spend their entire lives in trees. I wish he just wanted me. He actually wants to go on the ground and eat my plants because he has a taste for them now. You guys see? So reptiles are pretty cool. They don't, they get a pretty bad rap. They're actually pretty affectionate for most species. I have some turtles and tortoises that do love a good neck scratch and also love just interaction with humans. But prehensile tail skinks, so where, where were we? So they nourish their young with the placenta and then after eight to 10 months, they will have a baby and mom and dad will both take care of that baby. Sometimes they have twins, which is really cool. And then after about a year or two, mom and dad are ready to have another baby. And so last year's, or that, um, the older baby, I guess, will usually get kicked out if it's a male. If it's a female, she'll want to go and start her own little circulus family group. He actually is a vegetarian, so he eats pothos plants, he eats, this is his, this was his dinner. He ate all of his mushrooms, he really loves mushrooms. Their metabolism really depends on the temperature in their environment. So during winter time they won't eat as much and uh, they won't grow as much, but come summertime when it warms up, he will eat like a head of lettuce a day and he will shed probably once every two months as well. They eat their shed, which is really cool too. Can you come up here so people can see you? And they're not all, the species can be very temperamental. They are not all like Junior. Junior is super sweet. I have no idea how I got so lucky with him. But he has um, some cousins in there that are twins and they are vicious. Vicious. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, alrighty, thank you guys for joining me for story time with Junior and Friends. Monday is our next story time. We're gonna be talking about trash, which is kind of neat, and composting. And we'll be having some worms to look at and learn about. They're pretty cool. Like worms don't have lungs, so how do they breathe? So we're gonna talk about all that as to why worms like to come out when it rains and how do worms make baby worms and some really cool things. So last kiss, say good night. Say good night. There you go. Good.